Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Sam I beat the Ganji wel welcoming you to the correct views. Guys, I need you to do me a favor like I always say. I need you to hit subscribe and share and all of those wonderful things. Now, I know that every host from here to Budapest says such things, but like I've been saying, the reach of this program has been minuscule to nothing since the attack from Facebook, which is what I'm calling it. It was an outright attack. It was an attack on my livelihood, my income, and uh, what had been a rather substantial um, following base. So make sure you hit share, make sure you hit subscribe if you are enjoying uh, the news, uh, the, the facts that you get here that you don't get elsewhere. Now, I know I am only doing two of these a month right now. But again, a lot of it is just to keep the name active. I am unfortunately um, blah, largely doing the show by myself. And with it not landing in as many people's feeds due to shadow banning, due again to there not being a Facebook account, it's you guys that see this and get the news that I'm about to deliver that are going to be the ones that ultimately decide the worth of the studying and the information that I give you. And again, what I give you is facts. Whether or not um, naysayers or trolls would say something else, they're welcome to their opinion. But the facts, the truth, you can always count on getting here at the correct views to the best of my ability. Friends, AP, and I, I, before I start this, I did want to say this. Um, people sometimes learn things in different ways. And I thought that it would be interesting to take a look here at some of the safe, safe and effective. Some of the other things in our past, which we have said is safe, as um, we compare it to what's being told to the poor victims going to the Olympics, and that's exactly the word I'm sticking by, and uh, those who eat the Fukushima poison food, and those who swim in the poison ocean, it's being sold to us as safe. Well, again, different people learn different ways. Perhaps we should take a look at some of the things that were considered perfectly safe before, and there were people sounding the alarm, there were people uh, warning, there were people um, saying, hey, you know this, this isn't going to work, and people didn't listen. Hey, this isn't healthy, people didn't listen. Well, we can sort of compare and contrast here. And I think it's a good way to delve into what's being done by all things nuclear. Lawsuits filed Monday in California seek potential class action damages from Dow Chemical and its successor company over a widely used bug color linked to brain damage in children. I believe it's chloropyrifos is approved for use and more than 80 crops, including oranges, grapes, blueberries, soybeans, almonds, and walnuts, though California banned sales of the pesticide last year and spraying of it this year. Some other states, including New York, have moved to ban it. Now, I'm not going to go on to all of what it does, but it was first used in 1965 and wasn't banned for household use until 2001. But of course, even in 2001, they kept using it all the way up until the uh, what was it, the date that I just gave you. Oh, uh, what was it? it just well, okay. I think it's just this year it's being outright banned. So, knowing the damage that it was bringing upon everyone, it did nothing. And it says, aside from the nearby spraying, the lawsuits say the parent, relatives, or others in frequent contact with the child worked in the fills or packing plants, and became contaminated with the chemical that they passed on to the child. Isn't that interesting? And a Dow, this company, well, we can trust them. They're a huge corporation. If they say something is safe, it has to be. Kind of like TEPCO. 
kind of like General Electric, which ties into the whole Fukushima reason that I'm posting this. Anyone listening? Anybody at all? Um, here uh, is another one, the Charlotte Observer. Oh, it's going to make me do the ad block thing. All right, so give me two seconds. Again, the, the, the goal here is to understand that all these things which have been deemed safe, 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 safe for who? Snakes look like monsters as fungal disease spreads in Eastern Europe, experts say. Now, I'm not saying that this is caused by radiation. Look at the condition of that snake. Okay, take a good look at that. Take a really good look at that before I go on. You do realize that when they find problems, and this is, has always been true about uh, chemicals and nuclear poisoning, many other things, the condition of frogs is extremely important because due to the way their body structure is and how they absorb so much of the environment, they can be an amazing harbinger, uh, harbinger about dangers in the environment, which are working their way to people. And well, Sam, these are snakes. What, what do you think snakes eat? Shazam, Sparky. So we have all of these issues cropping up after we've been using things on crops. Isn't that clever? After we've been spraying things, after we've been using all of these chemicals and all of these this and all of that, now we've got snakes that look like this. It's a pain-bellied water snake. It's been afflicted with the disease. You know what? Anyway, I'm not saying it was caused by nuclear elements, but all of these things that were deemed to be so unbelievably safe, are they, are they, do they look safe to you? Does that make you then um, uh, a little more likely to read the original studies of nuclear poison and not what's been um, altered for the sake of the bottom dollar? By that I mean, and stay with me here, the levels that are allowed of various nuclear toxins today in the food, in the environment, in the water, whatever, into the air, massively higher than was ever deemed safe when people first started understanding what it was that uh, these elements could do. They wouldn't have been able to do their bomb testing if they, if they had admitted that having any strontium-90 in your body is a, could be a direct link to many cancers, including bone, right? So they raised what was safe. And now, you know, I have these trolls on my comment line telling me how safe these things are and how they are proven to be so incredibly safe. But let me, let me ask you a question. Weren't these deemed to be safe by the supposedly same people? Okay, take a look at this. Um, the Blackout Warfare document warns of devastating cyber attack by China, Russia. Now, again, we're going to go on to... And the, people say I jump from topic to topic without letting anyone know. If you read the description when you click the video, it says what the topics are going to be. So we, we are moving on here. Um, the ads prevented me from reading that last one in greater depth. I'm just not dealing with it. Um, you get the point. You can look up the snake fungus. Um, was it also a good idea? We were also told it was safe to segue nicely into this too. It was safe. It was good for production. And again, that God love and ever bottom line it was very, very good for the bottom line for all of us to allow this, that, and the other to be made in China. How much of this technology, and look up China Gate, a lot of it had to do from the ever-loving Bill Clinton. How much information and in nuclear technology has been delivered to China via the good of the bottom line, every, making everything from widgets to uh, nuclear missiles. Not only are they pointed at us because of the good of the bottom line, because we should be making these things ourselves, 
But a lot of people don't understand that an EMP attack doesn't necessarily, and usually doesn't at all, involve the sort of nuclear fallout that a nuclear war would produce. And that is because it's done so high up in the atmosphere. However, it, it, mush, it blankets out and sends such a huge charge that unless everything is backed by a Faraday cage, which virtually none of the infrastructure in the United States is, I mean real infrastructure, not what Joe Biden claims is infrastructure. You know, a man wanting to be a woman isn't necessarily infrastructure. But even though it's different plumbing, um, we're going to change the waterworks. That must be the reasoning. Um, EMP attacks shut down your cars, your radios, everything will be fried to the point where you can't communicate. And then, of course, they can attack, leaving the United States wide open. Many of our launch capabilities <clears throat> will still be intact, but the only response we would have would be that of nuclear. Or you could surrender. With China and Russia both looking, as it seems, to deliver this kind of a problem that and this kind of a weapon to the United States, it's not hard to see where, again, things which were sold to us as a good idea, well, good idea how? It, it sent America's best paying jobs to another country for the good of the bottom line so that they could build weapons and use our technology to further their aims, which could result in our death. And this is why I have no love for the Greens, Socialists, Democrats, none of that. Absolutely none of that. Donald Trump was absolutely correct because when you deviate from the ideas that have founded the country, you end up with issues like this. An official congressional advisory board has released a document outlining numerous cyber threats posted to the United States and its potential responses to attacks against the electrical grid. The advisory group, a nonprofit organization called the EMP Task Force, again, whenever you hear that, think nuclear missile high in the sky, no fallout, death of civilization. The advisory group, a nonprofit organization called the EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security, is comprised of former intelligence operatives, scientists, and statements. From the group's website, the EMP commissioners and staff included some of the greatest scientists and strategic thinkers, including Dr. John Foster. I'm not going to read all of these. There's many, many, as you can see at the fact cam over here, many, 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 many of them. But uh, the document in question was released on July 4th, 2021. It's called Blackout Warfare, a Cyber Attacking Electrical Grids, a New Strategic Weapon. In the memo, the EMP task force concludes that the U.S. faces imminent danger from a devastating cyber attack against its electric power grid, most notably from Russia and China. Quote, Russia is the best prepared to defend against cyber attack and use cyber as a strategic weapon, the document states, uh, later citing the recent colonial pipeline cyber a lot of these things could also be fishing to see how our networks and uh, the programs within the real infrastructure, how they respond to attacks to craft a better attack against you, whether or not you pay for the key or not. That Play that again. Rewind that. Play it again because it's very, very important that you understand that. It goes on, quote, during an extreme international crisis, a massive Russian cyber attack against the entire U.S. electrical grid prior to the outbreak of conventional or nuclear war is likely. Again, they're going to, set, they're going to try to cripple our electronics and our ability to communicate and our ability to even travel to safe areas. You won't even be able to get to a bomb shelter if this is done before they nuke you. It wouldn't cripple U.S. responses, but it would make it uh, far less effective. It would deter or defeat the U.S. with a gray zone aggression instead of a prior or outbreak of a real shooting war. Again, because the fallout is so high in the sky. It's not, it's not like you know, setting off a nuke in the middle of New York City. 
even though it could lead to that in the future. Many of these madmen never cared about such a, such a thing. It goes on that this is consistent with Russia's military doctrine of cyber warfare, and it is an unprecedented and decisive revolutionary, revolution in military affairs. Uh, likewise, the document says that China is also prepared to launch, quote, a massive cyber attack against the America prior to a hot war launches. Warning that Chinese communists have embedded themselves into every level of the U.S. research and development related to the electric grid. Thank you, Democrats. Thank you, Bill Clinton. If you don't believe that, go ahead and look up what China Gate is. You will see that I am correct. China has the money, national laboratory network, trained personnel, and strategic necessity to develop the highest quality cyber weapons capable of severely disrupting the electrical grid throughout the U.S., the document says. It also says that the Chinese dysphoria in the U.S. has placed potential Chinese agents into virtually every part of engineering, which means they're creating the back doors that they will need to pull off the attack, which will never be seen, because they designed the software which is designed to see it. In this case, designed to open the back door. And they compare it to the way uh, COVID-19 was launched. First, it's a payload, kind of like the Suxnet virus, which was loaded into uh, Natanz, Iran, which is also a ridiculous place to build a nuclear power plant. But friends, th these sorts of things, and I'm going to get to more Fukushima stuff in a minute, but these are the nuclear threats that we are facing today. And I want to cover a lot of these. We have people out there covering Fukushima, and I appreciate that, and I'm going to stay with that. But there are other nuclear issues which I think a lot of hosts don't get to, and I have done my best to, to do that. Um, this would definitely count as Fukushima for anybody who understands that if a sneeze was to hit Japan, it could be an extinction event for very large parts of the northern hemisphere, if not substantially even worse than that. Chinese video threatens Japan over possible Taiwan intervention. Yes, yeah, threatens them with nuclear weapons. This is uh, the NZ Herald. We will use nuclear bombs first. We will use nuclear bombs continuously. We will do this until Japan declares unconditional surrender for the second time. A threatening video circulated among official Chinese Communist Party channel warned. When we liberate a Taiwan, if Japan dare, I'm fighting a sneeze here from making faces. When we, when we liberate Taiwan, Taiwan, if Japan dares to intervene by force, even if it only deploys one soldier, one plane, or one ship, we will not only return fire, but we will also wage a full-scale war against Japan itself. And they go on to say that they will be nuked a second time, referring to the United States war. Nearly 60 years have passed. Now the international situation has changed dramatically. Our country is in the midst of major change, and all political policies, tactics, and strategies must be adjusted to protect the peaceful rise of our country. Don't you love how they talk about peace right before they're talking about nuking someone? China will destroy Japan. Professor Fruling says he doesn't expect the nuclear threat to be echoed by Beijing's higher echelons. My sense is that they will squash this kind of rhetoric insofar as it is likely to strengthen the case for the U.S. to rely on heavily nuclear weapons in the Indo-Pacific as well. In other words, if they have to, they'll just hide it. They, the, the Communist Party does that frequently. They send their lackeys out to say things which they wouldn't dare say. But nothing goes through with at least not a, uh, a wink if not an outright nod, they're from the higher-ups in the Communist Party in China. You can guarantee that. We know that from the white papers and what spies have given us over the years, which is very reliable information. Uh, the Guardian, not particularly the speak of honesty here, but they have a good article regarding this. No entry. Symbolism in Fukushima has Olympics begin to empty stadium. This is actually really good news because... 
if the players want to risk their lives by engaging in this ridiculous activity there, then that's fine. But it is good to see that, you know, people aren't necessarily being subjected to it, which has been our worry here for years on this show. And those of us who have gone over the data, which shows the dangers inherent in this. I'm not saying we shouldn't have the Olympics due to COVID. That's ridiculous. But we shouldn't have the Olympics there due to Fukushima. That is science. That is sound science. Not the bunk science. It says that it's safe. We don't care about bunk science here on The Correct Views. We care about real science. And real science says that this is not safe. After years, delay and months of rancor, finally some Olympic sport. Few will remember the details of Yukio Ino's opening pitch to Michelle Cox in Japan's softball match against Australia in Fukushima on Wednesday morning. But her delivery witnessed by the organizing committee, President Siko Hoshimoto, signaled that the most bizarre games in modern history are happening. In other words, there's no fans. It's The Guardian. It's a long article that talks about how there's no fans and how you're supposed to still care about it. The point is, if nothing else, this is at least decent news that, you know, that many people are not being subjected to this dread. I mean, the bear goes wild in Olympic Stadium is still on the loose. Uh, he's no average bear. The Asian black bear made it into the Olympics when he broke into a venue hosting the sports event on the Tokyo Games on Wednesday. Again, animals have been flourishing there because people will die there. Um, the beast was, and then they're not particularly healthy. They're flourishing, so people say, oh, they're healthy. All kinds of things flourish after a nuclear accident, but it doesn't mean it's healthy. Its DNA is destroyed. Um, the beast was spotted by guards early in the day at the Fukushima Azuma Baseball Stadium, just hours before the women's softball opener between Australia and Japan, which, again, nobody saw. So the bear came to see it. I mean, you know, bear with it. We've got uh, this, a uh, South... Now, this is good. This just proves that... This is a victory, friends. Those of us who have been telling the truth. <clears throat> Those of us who have been warning everybody, sometimes we get a victory. Sometimes, you know, God, who I believe in, looks down and says, you know what? We're going we're gonna to let at least some of this that you're doing matter, even if you feel like it doesn't matter. And I feel like most things don't matter anymore. But Reuters, South Korea team to screen its food over Fukushima radiation concerns. Thank God. And it's in Reuters, which is even better. South Korea's Olympic team will cook food for its athletes separately and screen ingredients for radiation during the Tokyo Olympics an official said Monday, a potential further irritant to the fried Seoul Tokyo relations around the games. Yeah, because Japan has lied to the world, and Seoul isn't going to take it. Um, many people don't know this, but there are some theories which says that China could nuke the United States from the north because most of the food that they grow in it a lot of the jet, the way the jet stream works, the fallout would not necessarily reach them. So South Korea, again, due to its location, normally has access to food which doesn't necessarily have to come from the poison area near Fukushima. And the Olympics throw all of that into question. So it's good to see that those of us who have been giving sound, reliable, trustworthy information regarding the concerns here with nuclear toxins, we're being hurt. South Korea has periodically irked Japan with such steps because they care about their health more than the bottom line, as curbing imports of Japanese seafood, which is poison, citing safety concerns after the 2011 Fukushima tsunami and nuclear disaster. I'm delighted to see that. I'm absolutely delighted to see that. I couldn't be more excited if I had to be. Um, it's good to know that you're doing work that matters. That might have come in loud. It's you are an idiot. You know what that means. It's the dumb of the day. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I'll let, I'll let this play. You are an idiot. All right. For those of you that might not know, we do the Dunce Cap of the Month. That happens, uh, it'll be near the end of July. And 
I usually do the last day. Sometimes it posts the first day of the following month. And if you want to donate, please do at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The money you give me goes towards a better show. That's how we got the whole setup here. Fact cam back, all of that. The studio's open again. Um, I need your help. I need your help financially, and I certainly need your help with subscribing and sharing and liking and spreading it onto multiple platforms, commenting, letting me know where you hear this from, where you're watching it from. All of that's helpful. The correct views at hotmail.com to contact me or to donate through PayPal. Los Angeles Times, far from the Olympic limelight, the waves of Fukushima are healing for local surfers. You get that? Healing. Now, and I was going to do this, but then I didn't get around to buying the wine. Let me take a bottle, a glass of wine, and then floss my teeth and swish it in the wine. Maybe clean out my nose and my ears with Q-tips, swish them in the wine, and then give it to you. And call it healing wine, because we know Nothing says healing like tainted wine. <clears throat> it's important that we have healing for local surfers. We don't want the local surfers to feel ostracized. We all should swim in the poison water. And we all should surf in the poison water. And we all should believe the lies that come to us from people like Dow. And if things kill us later, that's fine. As long as we don't hurt the feelings of the surfers. We all need to heal and recover. And that doesn't mean not going.